A Spirit Haunts the Year's Last Hours by Alfred Law Tennyson A spirit haunts the year's last hours, dwelling amid these yellowing bowers. To himself he talks. For at eventide, listening earnestly, at his work you may hear him sob and sigh in the walks. Earthward he boweth the heavy stalks of the mouldering flowers. Heavily hangs the broad sunflower over its grave that is so chilly. Heavily hangs the hollyhock. Heavily hangs the tiger lily. The air is damp and hushed and close as a sick man's room when he taketh repose an hour before death. My very heart faints and my whole soul grieves at the moist rich smelling of the rotting leaves and the breath of the fading edges of box beneath and the year's last rose. Heavily hangs the broad sunflower over its grave the earth so chilly. Heavily hangs the hollyhock Heavily hangs the tiger lily. In the Valley of Quarterets by Alfred Law Tennyson. All along the valley, stream that flashest white, deepening thy voice with the deepening of the night. All along the valley, where thy waters flow, I walked with one I loved two and thirty years ago. All along the valley, while I walk today, the two and thirty years were a mist that rolls away. For all along the valley, down the rocky bed, thy living voice to me was as the voice of the dead. And all along the valley, by rock and cave and tree, the voice of the dead was a living voice to me. Crossing the Bar by Alfred Law Tennyson Sunset and evening star, and one clear call for me, and may there be no moaning of the bar when I put out to sea. But such a tide as moving seems asleep, too full for sound and firm, when that which drew from out the boundless deep turns again home. Twilight and evening bell, and after that the dark, and may there be no sadness of farewell when I embark. For though from out our born of time and place the flood may bear me far, I hope to see my pilot face to face when I have crossed that bar. The Prison Speech from King Richard the Second, Act Five, Scene Five. I have been studying how I may compare this prison where I live unto the world. And for because the world is populous, and here is not a creature but myself, I cannot do it. Yet I'll hammer it out. My brain I'll prove the female to my soul, my soul the father. And these two beget a generation of still breeding thoughts, and these same thoughts people this little world in humours like the people of this world. For no thought is contented. The better sort, as thoughts of things divine, are intermixed with scruples and do set the word itself against the word, as thus, Come, little ones, and then again. It is as hard to come as for a camel to thread the postern of a small needle's eye. Thoughts tending to ambition, they do plot unlikely wonders. How these vain, weak nails may tear passage through the flinty ribs of this hard world, my ragged prison walls. And for they cannot, 
die in their own pride. Thoughts tending to content flatter themselves that they are not the first of fortune slaves, nor shall not be the last, like silly beggars, who sitting in the stocks refuge their shame, that many have and others must sit there, and in this thought they find a kind of ease, bearing their own misfortunes on the back of such as have before endured the like. Thus play I in one person many people, and none contented. Sometimes am I a king, then treasons make me wish myself a beggar, and so I am. Then crushing penury persuades me I was better when a king, then I am kinged again, and by and by think that I am unkinged by Bolingbroke, and straight am nothing, but whate'er I be, nor I nor any man that but man is with nothing shall be pleased, till he be eased with being nothing. Music do I hear? Ha <laughs> ha, keep time, how sour sweet music is. When time is broken, no proportion kept. So is it in the music of men's lives, and here have I the daintiness of ear to check time broke in a disordered string, but for the concord of my state and time had not an ear to hear my true time broke. I wasted time, and now time doth waste me. For now hath time made me his numbering clock, My thoughts are minutes, And with sighs they jar their watches on unto mine eyes, The outward watch whereto my finger, Like a dial's point is pointing still in cleansing them from tears. Now, sir, the sound that tells what hour it is are clamorous groans, Which strike upon my heart, which is the bell, so sighs and tears and groans show minutes, times and hours, but my time runs posting on in Bolingbroke's proud joy, while I stand fooling here, his jack of the clock. This music mads me, let it sound no more, for though it have holp madmen to their wits, in me it seems it will make wise men mad, Yet blessing on his heart that gives it me, For tis a sign of love, And love to Richard Is a strange brooch In this all-hating world.